Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 555 chainsaw. Customer complaint is that it just bogs. No power. Can't cut wood. First thing we're going to do is take a look inside the fuel tank. See if there's any water in the bottom of the tank. Smell the fuel. See if it's fresh. We're going to fish the filter out and see what we got there. So this filter looks pretty clean. The filter was probably replaced recently, maybe even in an attempt to fix this bog. We're going to pressure test this fuel line and make sure there's not a hole in the hose. Uh, pump it up to 10 pounds and it's holding. Now you'll notice that there's an orange filter on this saw and I'm putting a blue one on. The reason for that is that recently Husky has decided that auto-tune chainsaws need a finer micron filter. Uh, the new 585s and 592 XPs come standard with the blue filter and in the future replacing filters on your auto-tune saws should get the blue one. Um, you might be asking, well, Mr. Dealer Tech, how often should I change that filter? And I would give you the standard Husqvarna response that um, it depends. So if you got really nasty fuel and the filter's getting brown, definitely replace it. But otherwise, uh, Husky calls for 100 hours or monthly. So just to get caught up on the video here, we're looking in a cylinder and make sure we don't have a scored condition. And this is going to turn out to look just fine. So now recently Husky's also come out with a new fuel hose for auto-tune chainsaws. That hose has got a magnet in it. Husky has discovered that many fuels have metal in them. The magnets located near the filter in the hose, you can see where it is by the bulge in the hose. The idea is that the metal is going to attract to the outside of the hose, and if any happens to get past the filter, then it'll collect on the inside of the hose at the magnet. So watch for that. Now I was going to test run this thing, and when I was pumping the purge bulb, it just didn't feel right. I mean, you know, you know how it's supposed to feel when you're pumping fuel. Nice, clean, smooth. Just a little bit of pressure behind it. Uh, this didn't feel anything like that. It felt like there was a blockage. So we're going to take this thing apart, yank the carburetor off of here, and see if there is a blockage. Two screws hold the carburetor on. They pass through the air filter holder. We got those out of the way. There's two rubber mounts that hold that air filter holder in place. We got those out of the way. That's our fuel return line from the purge bulb. We removed our throttle cable and moved the air filter box out of the way. We'll pop the main fuel line from the tank off the carburetor. And then we'll remove our electrical wires for auto-tune and our diagnostic port. That holder that the connector's in is kind of tricky to deal with. Once you get it out of there, it can only go back together one way, so don't worry about that. We'll get some of this debris blown off of here before we open up the carburetor. The first step will be to grab a Phillips screwdriver and remove what is the lower throttle valve. Two screws and one piece of throttle linkage, just put an eyeball on it, it's not that big a deal. We'll pop the uh, 
pump cover off. And what do we find? Well, the micro screen in the carburetor is just scummed over. I mean, there I'm comparing it to a brand new one, and you can really see the difference. If fuel can't pull through that screen, you're going to feel that in the purge bulb. And that's what I felt when I was trying to prime it. So basically, um, we got the new screen in. We're just going to put it all back together and give it a try. Reverse order. Put the pump cover back on. Put the throttle valve back on. Two screws. The linkage hangs to the outside of the levers as you're looking at the carburetor. This guy's fast. Alright, there's the diagnostic connector back on the carburetor. And then the first thing we'll do is plug the white connector in. And once you have the two halves connected, then that connector snaps onto the body of the carburetor. It's on that auto-tune module that's bolted to the carburetor. So once you set the carburetor in place and you want to get the air box lined up, make sure that you put an eyeball on the choke linkage. There's a spring and it has to be oriented a certain way over the choke lever. I'd tell you what that is, but I don't remember off the top of my head. When I got it in my hand, I could just snap it together. But when I'm uh, at home making videos, I've got no idea. Reconnect our fuel lines. This one's the one that pulls fuel from the purge bulb through the carburetor. And then that line right there is the tank vent. Our two screws go back through the air box and through the carburetor. And we'll crank these down by hand. We'll get our rubber grommets back in place that hold the back of the carburetor stable and our throttle cable. Yeah, all you gotta do is position it near anywhere close to the cam there and it grabs it and pulls it in. We'll do a function check on our fast idle feature on our choke lever and make sure it engages and kicks off. We'll slap the air filter back on. So that's all I got for you on the Husqvarna 555 Auto Tune Chainsaw Scum in the Carburetor Fix. Thanks for watching. Later.